Welcome to Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz, and we're at the California Republican Party Convention in the Bay Area. We are joined by Jay Obernolte. He is a member of the California State Assembly, and he's a thinker. And I love that about him because he's been thinking about daylight savings time. This is going to be a great and fascinating interview. Explain to me what the federal law is as it relates to whether states can adopt standard or daylight savings time. Well, the Federal Universal Time Act says that states can elect, it's a binary decision, either to observe daylight savings time or to not observe daylight savings time. But if states observe daylight savings time, they must do it within the dates that are set by the federal government. Are there any states that do not observe daylight savings time? Yes, there are several. There's Arizona and there's Hawaii. Okay. And there are other states that have different parts of the state in different time right. zones. That's kind of frustrating. Yes. I was in Tennessee recently and uh, for work actually, from Nashville and Knoxville, you're changing time zones. Yes. So it's kind of crazy. Indiana has that similar right. problem, yeah. So what if a state, sir, wants to stay on daylight savings time? all year round. That's right. Currently not allowed. Not allowed. And that's why my joint resolution that's pending before the legislature would petition Congress to pass a law allowing states to do that. Because we have a large and growing body of research that says that yeah, let's talk about that. daylight savings time full time has a lot of positive both health consequences and energy consequences for our state but and let, our country. Let's really dig into that because you provided me with some research. I appreciate yep. that, sir. Apparently, when you are off daylight savings time, there's increased risk of heart attack, mm -hmm. uh, traffic congestion, uh, traffic accidents, suicides. Yes, and that's as a result of having your circadian rhythm disrupted twice a year. I like so that word, circadian. <laughs> that act of changing right. time, even in an hour, does have those negative health consequences. And if you stay on daylight savings time year round, or at least during the daylight savings time period, we understand robberies go down, yes. energy usage goes down, the economy improves mm -hmm. because you have more time to shop. Sure, and also another important consequence is that we're having an increasing problem here in the state of California as more and more of our electricity generation is coming from renewable sources. Right. We're having an increasing problem matching ah, the ah, production right. of that electricity with the consumption. Because right now, electricity, a lot of people don't realize, it's something that must be consumed instantly the moment it's generated, unless we have some means of storage, which we don't which have a lot well, of storage solar, right now. No, Do we, can well, we solar storage? No. Uh, so you're a scientist. You're so about, I got to be careful about <laughs> questioning him on anything science. Well, no. I mean, so Tesla has a battery storage right. system that's meant to be paired with solar, but that's a brand new thing. So if I have a solar uh, panels on my home, yes. doesn't some of that go back to the grid, but okay, so it gets used right away? That's right. The the electric, the utility must figure out a way to use that or transmit it elsewhere right away. I think I'm going to change topics because he knows much more than me on anything science, but I want to continue on daylight savings time. Okay, so you need to get the federal government to allow yes. the states to choose year-long daylight savings time. But then, let's presume that happens. Sir. In California, we passed Prop 12 in 1949. What did Prop 12 say? Prop 12 is what put us on daylight savings time in okay. the first place. And, but because it was a, pro, a voter proposition, that means that any decision about changing the time that we observe must be approved by the voters. Okay, so that means we need to either get the voters to sign initiative petitions to get it on the ballot, or you all can put it right. on the ballot. Is it half or two-thirds, do you know? I uh, believe, well, it depends on if it's a constitutional yeah, amendment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Be that as it may, you yeah. have to get it through the legislature. Um, have you spoken with your friends? I mean, this is going to take sure. a while, because you got to get to the feds first, but have you spoken with your friends in the sure. legislature? Well, I mean, this is a topic that's ripe for discussion, because this research that indicates that changing times twice right. a year is bad for us is a fairly recent thing. So now that we have this body of evidence, the question is what to do about this. So we have a bill that is still pending in the legislature this year that would take us off daylight savings time permanently. Which, well, keep, or keep it on permanently? No, no, th there's another bill that would take us off permanently. Oh, oh. Uh, it's Kansan Chu is my colleague oh. who has that bill. And I agree that that would actually be better than what we've currently got. So I'm a co-author of that bill. And so that, and that's something that we, we're empowered to do now. But I think that staying on daylight savings time permanently would be an even better solution. And that's mm. why I'm running this resolution just to encourage Congress to give us additional tool for dealing with this problem. So let's talk about your resolution. 
I mean, I, I don't know that this would be a partisan issue. Maybe there are partisan implications I can't figure out, but what's happening? Democrats, Republicans, what do they think about your resolution? So far, I have not gotten a no vote. Okay. It's been through, are you through? Oh, right. Have you been right. through? Right. So we've been through two committees. Uh, we just passed through the... What uh, committees? Utility, I can't even imagine. Well, there's a committee on local government. Local and government. And there's a, the Committee on Utilities and Commerce. That makes is sense. The one, and that Why does it go to local government? I wonder. A, only the Rules Committee knows. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So, the, uh, so we just cleared the Committee on Utilities and Commerce okay. this last week, and so now we'll go to the Assembly floor. Okay, so let's say it passes, yes. gets to the Senate. You then send the resolution to who? Dianne Feinstein or well, Speaker? It gets uh, transmitted to the uh, U.S. Congress. Just somehow transmitted. That's right. So. But have you spoken with Senator Feinstein or, or Leader McCarthy? Because look, if they can run this, that'd be great. Yeah, I have not yet. Is it, but is it premature? It, I would think so, because I want to make sure that it's something uh, the legislature wishes to act on first. Mm -hmm. And if we pass the joint resolution, then it will go over to the Senate, and the Senate must concur. Right. But if, Do you uh, have a co-sponsor yet there? Uh, I, I don't. I'll have to okay. find one after we pass the assembly right. floor. So, I mean, I wonder, though, because look, I found out about this issue, not from your staff, who happens to be terrific, by the yeah. way, but you got some press on it. Uh -huh. And so I got to think that, you know, federal electeds are seeing this, so could they preempt you? They certainly could. Right. But this is the way that discussions get I had understand. in the political world, is through resolutions passed by right. legislatures of uh, different uh, states. But are you concerned, though, if your bill with Mr. Chu passes, that if the resolution the federal government winds up being transmitted, then they allow you to adopt the daylight mm -hmm. savings time year-round, that it'd be hard to undo what you and Kansas Chu had done? Well, I'm not concerned because ultimately the voters will decide. So ultimately the voters are going to have to decide whether or All not right, because, we, we right. stick with the status quo, whether or not we abandon daylight savings time altogether, or whether or not we go to daylight savings time permanently. And given that fact, the joint resolution is just trying to put one more tool in the toolbox. How did this come to you, sir? I mean, you always have the greatest bills. How did this come to you? I'm sure reading a scientific yeah. journal or something, but what happened? Well, you know, it's it's actually a constituent issue for me. Someone because, came to you a constituent? Sure. I, many constituents have told me every spring and every fall how much they hate disrupting their, their life and their circadian rhythm. I, I got to tell you this. I, I digress for, for a moment. I have very few memories. I, mean, I don't have a lot of memories of my younger youth. I can remember being four or five and my parents tried to explain to me daylight savings time, and I kept saying, but how does the sun know? That's right. But how does the sun know? Yeah. And literally, it was a whole weekend uh -huh. of them trying to explain it to me. I, I just couldn't understand it, which maybe yeah. in a lot of ways says the mind of a five-year-old is on to something. Many maybe times, shouldn't. sure. Do you know if this, what happens in Europe or Asia? I don't know. Do you know? Do they have daylight savings time in Europe uh, and Asia? You know, Africa? I'm not sure. I don't know why. Yeah. Central America, South America? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know the answer. Uh, I, I know some countries uh, observe it and some do not. Right. Very briefly, we only have a, mi a minute or so. Uh, you've been talking about the drought. Uh, you represent areas that are probably very wet and very dry. Yes. Uh, Big Bear's your home, but you also have some areas that are just parched, yes. but you're still in Southern California. So how's it going for you and your constituents drought wise? Well, uh, unfortunately, Southern California did not get yeah. the amount of moisture that we had anticipated or hoped for. Come on, you're a medium. scientist. What happened? Well, <laughs> what happened? You know, it didn't I, happen. I, I think that we're all di getting used to a diff completely different climatological right. model than we're used to. Right. So, uh, but given that fact, we have been, we, we did get some relief. And in Northern California. Uh, well, in Southern California, too. In which, the mountains? Yeah, in, in San fact, Bernardino's? Uh, if you look at the, sn the snowfall and the rain that we've got in the Mojave right. Desert uh, up until now, we're just about at a normal year. Okay. So we didn't get the above normal right. year that we were supposed to get with El Nino, but we did okay. When you come back, hopefully we'll see you at the Capitol. I'd love to talk to you about your plans to try to resolve the logjam on the drought. Sure. And we do have Prop 1, and that was a net positive, but there are a lot of issues still percolating. Yeah, more needs to be done. His name is Jay Obernolte. Always fun to have him on the show. He is a member of the California State Assembly. We're at the California Republican Party Convention this. I'm Brad Pomerantz, by the way, and this is Charter Local Edition.